On this episode, we are talking with Joe Cruz. Uh, Joe Cruz from Harlem, New York. He basically took his life savings and started a tequila brand. Uh, he's got a very, very passionate entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, single dad, so he's raising his son. He started a brand uh, on a limited budget, uh, and we get to hear his entrepreneurial spirit today. So stay tuned. All right, Arte Agave podcast. Uh, I'm here with Joe Cruz, Yave Tequila. Uh, my friend, I think the best thing to do, man, just kind of tell everyone a little bit about yourself, your background, and then uh, and then we'll hop into it a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, if you wrote a movie of like an underdog founder, it would probably be based on me. I went from <laughs> working as a stock boy in a liquor store. I kid you not. Like the lowest position you could have in the industry, wow. I started there because my dad, godfather, uncles were all in the industry. So even though I wasn't a big drinker, ironically, until my mid-20s, I was always around it. I learned through osmosis. I was always within the industry. And I went <laughs> from that to actually owning the first store that I worked in, which is pretty damn cool to say. Wow. Then, yeah, years later, like, you know, I was in the industry kind of in and out. I, I played sports a lot. So it was liquor jobs and sports. Only ways I made money, essentially. Wow. So yeah. did your, you worked, for, you worked for your dad at the liquor store? No, no. Yeah. I worked with my dad because my dad, the first time I worked, I worked at the liquor store. I don't remember. I was like six. I was at a register or something. They tell me some crazy story. And I'm like, <laughs> I guess I'm a liquor kid, which sounds horrible. <laughs> you know, I didn't drink, but the connotation followed me. Yeah. But then I went from liquor stores, you know, the most basic thing to working in distributor. So for a year, I was a merchandiser, which of course is the person when you walk into a store, you see a nice window, you see nice displays. A yep. guy like me does it. It doesn't magically appear. The companies don't pay for it. They bring me in to kind of fix it up for those big dogs. Wow. Then I went, then I was a salesman for 10 years. Wow. So I did that off premise for quite a while. And on my 10 year anniversary, I literally said, I don't want to do this anymore. It's kind of yeah. monotonous. I want to try something different. And the CEO at that time of my distributor said, you know what? A bunch of companies want to hire you. Here's a list. And I'm like, eh, we'll see. I I'll talk to everybody, but I'm going to follow my heart. I'm not going to chase the money. I plan on doing yeah. big things within the industry. And I wound up going to a tiny distributor. I mean, tiny, tiny, small as it gets at that time. Owned by a billionaire, Western Spirits, was, was owned by Brad Kelly. Great company, great company culture. He was a great man. But then after a few years, you know, it was it was almost like I was making someone else wealthy while mm -hmm. leaving my son. I'm a single dad. So I was working a lot, leaving my son with his grandmother. I was traveling. I traveled almost 365,000 miles in one year within Jeez. the U.S. Yeah. I was on flight so much that when I got on, people were like, how's the liquor business going? How are the brands doing? And I would talk to pilots and, and the stewardesses, which sounds absurd. It was like getting in the cab for me. It got to that point. Right. And then I woke up literally August 26, 2015, 730 in the morning, retired. My heart told me it was time to go for it. And I made three phone calls. The first was to my son. And I called my son because my birthday is August 27th. And because, you know, we're in the industry of travel and you're working all the time. I didn't get to see my friends as much as I wanted to. Hmm. So my friends made my birthday a national, a, a personal holiday where every August 27th, we're getting together. Every weekend, we're going to have fun. Wherever we are in the country, we're coming. So I said, you know, let me come down and see what this trip is like. Like you guys always drive up. It's five or seven in the car the whole time. I want to be part of it. Yeah. So I flew down on the 25th to Orlando, Florida, to a friend's house. And then, I mean, God had different plans. I woke up August 26th, 7th in the morning and just said, I'm going to do my own thing. So I was going to drive up to New York, pick up some friends, and I made three phone calls. The first one was to my son. Again, single dad, raised my son pretty much on my own when it came to, you know, just me and him, just me and yeah. a young man just living together. And I called him up and said, son, I'm going to start a brand from scratch. It was 730 in the morning on a Friday during the summer. He did not want to hear from me. I was, he was just playing video games all night. Who knows what he was doing? Great, dad. <laughs> so he picks up and he's like, what's up, dad? And I'm like, look, son, I'm going to create a brand from scratch. And he's like, what does this even mean? Yeah, right. So you know, every time. And I've how old? How old was he at that time? At that time, twelve. Well, okay. Seven years later. Yeah, funny to think about. Yeah. And he's like, "What does that mean, Dad?" And I said, "You know, every time I buy a video game, I'm the happiest person in the world. I'm like, all right, I'll get it for you." There's a guy on the other side of that equation who hears cha-ching every time the game mm. gets bought. He's excited. Yeah. I said, "I want to become that guy going forward." He mm. kind of wakes up a little bit. I can hear it. He's like, "You know what, Dad? Go for it. You'll be yeah. huge." I said, if it doesn't work, it'd be your fault. I love you, son. I had to pass the buck. <laughs> Teaching business is rough from day one. <laughs> so the next two calls I made with my mom and dad, and mm. this is so important because they got divorced when I was 10. Wow. So no hard feelings. Don't feel bad for me. Trust me. It's one of three things they agreed on during my life. The second was when I went to leave my distributor to the supplier. And this was a third day where the excitement was through the roof. On two separate phone calls, they were like, we've been waiting for this call. It's been time. It's about time. Do your own thing. 
Wow. You know, I, I don't have a plan, but the car ride to New York became a 24 hour word cloud planning session where I sat in the driver um, back seat and just planned. Mm. People getting wow. to call me, hey, what's up? Working on a brand. People are excited. I'm like, get excited in a couple of days. I have nothing yet. Yeah. Worked on it, worked on it. And went from, you know, I, I was a vodka drinker. I'm Puerto Rican, so I should have made rum, according to my family. I'm the crazy Puerto Rican with tequila. <laughs> but as we all knew, tequila was trending. Yeah. And I knew at some point it would hit this level. I thought it would take yeah. way longer, to be honest with you. Yeah. But the spike has happened. And the reason I knew this was because one of my favorite brands in liquor history is Tito's Handmade Vodka. Mm. Because he was gluten-free before it was cool to be gluten-free. Yeah. People didn't know what it meant. People said it's not going to work because gluten-free won't work. Corn-based vodka is stupid. You, you can't make a vodka from Texas, and he just kept making it. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Started in 1999. It took him around 11, 12 years for the world to catch up to what he yeah. sold way in advance. So I saw the same thing with tequila because, of course, now everyone has access to everything on their fingertips. They're like, what's good? What isn't? Why is tequila good? It's a stimulant. It's all natural. At least calories, et cetera, et cetera. I knew the world would catch up to that. Yep. But there was one thing that was seriously lacking, and that was flavors. Because I'm a liquor nerd, so I'll throw liquor stats here every so often. But when Absolute Papar started in 1989, people said flavored vodkas are ridiculous. It won't work. We all know how that worked out. Yeah. Yeah. Then rums got into it. And they said, no, 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 it's too sweet. You can't add flavor to that. We all know how that worked out. Yeah. And when they got to whiskey, the whole world said, there's no way we're going to do flavored whiskeys. That will not work. Then a little brand called Crown Royal sold a million cases when they launched Apple. Yeah. They said, okay, we might, they might be on to something with the flavors. So I wanted to take the bull by the horns and be the first one to create, we've created and kind of run with that. So that wow. was the mindset of creating Yava Tequila. I wanted to be the first, take a risk. And also create something people want to drink. Most of it tastes horrible. You don't even want to drink it. It just gets you to a place, but I want something that tastes good as well. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's that's quite a story, my friend. <laughs> that's just part of it. That's the, the short version because we only have an hour to talk today. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so you're so seven years, Yave. About or no? You get when it when it when was the official launch? Well, I like to do things. My favorite quote of all time, and I can say now is Abe Lincoln says, if you gave me eight hours to chop down a tree i'd use six sharpening my axe mm -hmm. and i always love that yeah so i've always been big on two-year increments so the first two years i pretty much started december of that year getting serious and picking it up the first two years were just the mind to reality yeah. i'm gonna make this yep. thing real didn't have a lot of money didn't hit lotto i wasn't given a check by a family member it yeah. was here's what i have i'm gonna make it work to feed my son and i going forward the next two years as of december 4th 2017 12 34 p.m the next two years were the, the laying the groundwork for Yave, the proof of concept, showing people this brand can sell. And literally, me and a, a few friends sold out a trunk of my car and backpacks. <laughs> New York City. Dude, I'm talking about. That is true New York. That's like old school. That's like, I mean, I'm, I'm in my 40s. So that's, that's my boys selling whatever, tape, CDs, all kinds of stuff. Selling tequila out of out of your, your trunk of your car is so New York. I love it. <laughs> and, and no distribution. So we had a we had Park Street, which is like a clearinghouse essentially. Yep. They do all logistics, all the back end stuff, but you have to sell everything yourself. So literally, I was walking into accounts and first of all, pitching them that I'm a real person with a real company. I'm not gonna steal their money if they were to buy this product. Then when they're convinced, hey, this guy's kind of cool, I had to convince them to sign up to Park Street. It right. wasn't the big guys, Southern Empire, RNDC. It was little old park street where yep. people said i'm not gonna sign that so i had to convince them of that then i had to sell them yave and then when they decided to buy it we would deliver about half the product which was crazy on trains buses like <laughs> i i think i still have like imprints under my skin like my muscles have changed right here from the book bag and the strap bags <laughs> and everything but it's part of it and i yeah. knew for a fact that when you put that effort in as, as you know the, the harder you work the smaller the world gets the more people respect and I told myself for two years, I'm going to go nonstop. But at least I did in New York so I could see my son and hang out with my family at the end of the day. But I told myself in two years, I'll be able to change some things. And while doing the backpack days, I got to build my team around me, which was mm. by far the best thing that I did, the most impressive thing with the people that I have around me. Mm. And then the next two years with distribution. And of course, if you're keeping track of numbers, it was the year COVID hit. Yeah. was when we got distribution. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yeah, perfect timing. We did a great job. We signed our deal at the end of 2019. It was oh, like, hey, we're on our way. And then, of course, COVID hit. And the first company that allowed me to really, really work was Allied Beverage in New Jersey. Hmm. Corey Bronstein, 
amazing guy, I've become a friend over time. I the first time I met him in a meeting, I said, as I said to everyone, we don't have the biggest team, I don't have the biggest budgets, but nobody's gonna outwork us. That's not a thing. Hmm. So he said, Cool, I'll take that challenge when the time comes. Then COVID came and I kept reaching out to them saying, How can I get in the market? Yeah. And he he challenged me and said, I'll let you work with a salesman every day of July, but you can't get in that car. It's gonna be a little weird. I was like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't care, whatever it takes. And in that month, I followed it was 22 salesmen throughout the month wow. and all through New Jersey from southern to northern. And I drove over 5,000 miles in a month. 22 work with us in a row? Yeah. <laughs> the only reason I didn't do more is because people canceled 4th of July weekend. Right. I started like right after that. Little things, of course. But every single day I was with a guy, Saturdays included. I was following a guy around, get out the car, put the mask on, give him that. Hey, I'm Joe Cruz. Let's go sell. I would sell, get back in the car, follow him and do 5,000 miles and change. I was expecting my car to just give up and say, you know why? You know what's going on here. And I would be like, yeah, you're right. We're driving too much. Dude, and that that is a that is a perfect clip. I'm gonna clip this and send it to all <laughs> all my young brand ambassadors. They're like, I got two work with this week. <laughs> no, nope. and that's why I'm the the only only one person canceled for some family things, and I told him send me the route. I work it myself, and wow. I went out. And I sold. I'm a salesman by nature, but yeah. I knew for a fact that putting that work in would would you know grow my respect within the company. But then it started to translate into other salesmen and other distributors would say, Hey, I heard you work during COVID. I'm like, Yeah, of course I did. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? Like to me, it was absurd that you would even question that. But yeah. I was the only supplier they allowed that month because I followed every rule and said I'm going to go nonstop and make it work. And wow. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't teach hard work. You know, there's always a reason not to do something, and most people find it. Yeah. I, I'm not most people. And COVID was not going to be a reason why Yahweh didn't have a good launch in New Jersey. Yeah, I mean, good for you. I mean, a lot of people. I think we had a little quick conversation before we started this podcast. Some people went all in. And, you know, pivoted and all that fun stuff. And some people just sat back and did nothing. There's nothing I could do. Um, and they came out, you know, they came out with anxiety and depression and sadness and their business isn't doing well. And obviously, because I was going to say, as soon as you, we popped on, I'm like, wait, this is a guy that really launched during COVID. He's got a single, single dad. I'm like, I mean, you look young, man. You look, you look good for Thank starting you. a business and really launching it with a distributor during COVID and being a single dad and living in New York, like I give Yava the credit. Yava helps your skin for everybody out there. It cures <laughs> COVID, but I can't stay on the bottle. It just loosely I've heard that. Just certain things I've heard. <laughs> but at the end of the day, man, when I was grinding by myself, I was looking forward to these moments where I would be working hard. Like now, wow, Yava's gonna be in about 13 markets by September 1st. Wow. Almost the entire essentially the entire East Coast open states, no control wow. states yet. And I'm the first one into the market. I'm with the salesman. I, I do the launch meetings. I, I flew into Georgia. For our GSM, the first launch we had, I flew down that morning. I flew out that night. Like whatever it takes, literally. Wow. I will not. We will not fail because I didn't do something right, or because I didn't put all the effort in. And so you and you didn't. You didn't have any funding launching this brand. Twenty thousand dollars was what I started with. The first two years of Yave. Oh man, I'll go back. So, I'll go back in time. So twenty thousand dollars to me and you is a lot of money, but in the world of <laughs> so many tequila brands, so much money going into tequila brands, so many celebrities going in. I mean, Kevin Hart just launched a tequila brand. 20 grand to launch a tequila company. Whew. Good for yeah. you. And the main reasons were because, I mean, if you come from money, you think differently than people who don't come from money. You know, we grind hard. We just work as hard as we can. That's all I really know. And I work smarter while I work harder, but I'm always ramping up the, the hard work. It's nonstop for me. And the two things that I did during that time, when we got lawyers and of course accountants and then we broke down the money, they were amazed because they said the two things I saved the most money on was lawyers, of course, because I did all the paperwork myself. Wow. From the US government to the CRT down in Mexico, I'm talking about stacks of paperwork, so many different stacks and filling out, even monotonous, like it would be the same thing three times, but you would the last page would be different. And it's wow. like, oh my God, I just filled out the same thing by hand, but you would pay a lawyer 20 or 30 grand to do that. You would pay them to, to hold communications with the CRT and the distillery. I did that myself. And my office was my apartment. I didn't have an office space. I did everything out of my living room and the front bedroom where I am now, the Yava room, as it's, been, as it's become. But it was just whatever it took. Well, I knew so at some point I, I'd get to the level I want to get to and I knew I'd grow. But you have to yeah. believe so much that I, I believe so much that if God himself came down and said, Yava's not going to work, I would say, I don't believe in God. Give me five years. We'll be back. We'll talk about this again. But I had to believe so much. So everybody else around me said, this is going to be successful. Yeah. Do, do, were you studying all these things? Were you YouTubing things? Like you were just signing stuff or were you actually like 
how did you learn what you were signing and, and getting all this done? As I said in the beginning, everything's at our fingertips. So I was learning yeah. how to go. Even when I found the distillery, people assume I use my industry background. I Googled how to start a liquor brand. I pretended I knew nobody. How would the average person start? Because I wanted to be Love able to, it. in the future, and even now, I like to help a lot of brands. Like I have a lot of people that reach out to me and ask me yeah. basic questions. I advise them as I can because I wanted to work every, I wanted to walk every single step on my own. So when yeah. someone asked me the question, they were asking me who had gone through it, not yeah. a third party. Oh, hey, let me reach out to this guy and give you the information. I want to, the key means more to me than anything. I mean, unlock yeah. possibility, opening doors, et cetera. I want to become the epitome of that statement to help as many people as possible. So that's why I walked every single step on my own and initially. And even now that we have guys involved, I like to learn, be a, a, as much a part of it as I can so I can impart knowledge to others. So that was very wow. important. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, man, there's so many people that I see going back to school and getting master's degrees and, and good for them. But it's like, like you said, it's all at your fingertips. Just Google it, YouTube it. Um, you could you can find that information out there, um, especially if you need to save thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh, it was I don't even know what I would have spent. I'm being honest, because obviously I did all the work myself. So I worked overtime, I worked extra hours. Like I would wake up in the morning, get my son ready for school, make him breakfast, I'd work out, then I'd get back on the sofa. Like everything started on the sofa in Harlem, quite literally. Yeah. You see, like Steve Jobs and these guys started out of their garage. I didn't even have a garage. I had a living room with a sofa and I had to figure it out. And you that was Harlem sofa. Harlem sofa and I made it work. <laughs> Like, and it's liquor. It's supposed to be fun. I mean, I'm in perspective of what I do. It That's should awesome. be fun. Even when I was creating it, I knew that I'd be creating happy moments for others as, as time went on. Happy moments for others, man. I like that. So you obviously have a lot of drive, a lot of entrepreneurial spirit. Does this does this come from your dad? Does this come from your family? Where where do you get where do you get this energy and this entrepreneurial spirit? Well, being from the hood, so to speak, there was one thing I had that most people didn't have around me, and I know this because I experienced it. I had a family structure. Hmm. Though my mom and dad were divorced, they were both in my life the entire time. Oh, I had cool. sisters, I had godmothers, I had aunts. So I became the man of the house at 10 when my parents got divorced. Wow. I remember my dad telling me, the man of the house. And I'm like, dude, I'm 10. <laughs> what did I even do? I don't have a job. I don't understand. And he was like, you'll figure it out. And I'm like, this is crazy. And as time went on, I became the man and I became that. So that helped me translate when it came to business hmm. and kind of, you know, take care of everyone, make sure everyone's good, but keep pushing along because you have to lead from the front. Yeah. So, Everything I had gone through initially from the backpack days to the creation, I knew at some point. I mean, you have to have foresight. You have to be creative when you're a founder. You have to have belief that people can't see. But you have to be able to go back to other times and say, I did that. So somebody says, I don't know how I feel about I did that. I don't know if I'm able to. I did that. I want to mm. literally tell you I did that. Yeah. Like, nobody can tell me within the company, oh, I'm tired. I've been going out every day. I don't know what you want me to feel about that. Yeah, I, did I, 20, I did 22 work with us in a row during COVID. Yeah, I have my kid at home. <laughs> my son's in the back room now playing video games. He was home the whole time. I was, I was raising him, sending him to school while creating out. Like wow. it was it was a ton of work. I'm not going to say it was easy. And oh, this was a cakewalk. Yeah. But here, there was nothing you could do. Here and here, you couldn't break me. It was going yeah. to happen. And that was it. There wasn't wow. a question. It wasn't a que question of if. It was a question of when. Yeah. Yeah, so tell tell me about the product itself. You mentioned flavors, like what 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 do you guys have? A reposado, a nejo? What what is? Tell well, me, tell me about through, I'm gonna take you through the Yave journey. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. So when I retired, I actually went back to work at a liquor store for a year in Manhattan. I went to my old distributor job in a friend's bar, hmm. and the reason being was because as I traveled the country, I lost touch a little bit with the streets. You know, you get higher up and you're you're doing bigger moves than you're used to. And you're not able to get into the streets and sell every single day. Yep. So I wanted to strip myself naked pretty much, bare my soul and start from scratch, humble myself as much as possible while doing my own re market research and seeing what people loved about the industry. And as we all know, all the complaints that want to come with it from store owners to <laughs> the consumers, I just wanted to take it all in. And in that liquor store, I spoke to 7,200 people. I remember I have the notes. I still have the notebook, which is crazy to think about. Every night I would come home and write in it. <clears throat> and I spoke to 7,200 people. And 6,422 people, the top two reasons they said they didn't drink tequila, and they would do the same thing almost every single time. They would say the burn, I don't like that, the way it feels, the, the face, it makes me ooh, or that bad night in college with a mixto. Yep. I won't say brand names, yep. but those other brands that people came to know. So I was obsessed with making something smooth. I was like, it has to be smooth, has to be smooth, has to be smooth. So, David Blanco was born. Beautiful. Wanted something easy drinking, no burn on the back, and everything they had told me. But while I was doing that, I was also working on the package. 
And Adzai is one of my best friends on my sofa. So the quick breakdown of what Yave is, Yave means key in Spanish. That's why it's a key on it. Yep. But if you don't speak Spanish, it's La Lave because it's spelled with two L's. So I spell it phonetically. Ironically, Spanish people got mad at me because I spelled it wrong. Mm-hmm. So until I speak Spanish, I'm an a-hole. Then like, okay, we get it, kid. You did a great one. I'm like, all right. And then they, then they get upset. But I bring them back to, to the Yave side, so to speak. Mm. The key was actually created before the name because when I was designing Wild with my boy, I kept telling him, I want to open doors for people. I want to change people's lives. I want to give mm. people access to this world of liquor. And while I'm speaking, he just said, we need a key. And I'm like, yeah, do it. I don't know. We create the, the key. We found the concept. It worked. Then when that was done, which funny that that was the easiest thing we did was the actual key, which is our Nike swoosh. It's mm. kind of our logo that even without the name, you could recognize Yava as we grow. Yep. I wanted to create a bottle that was good for the on-premise and the off-premise that a bartender could have fun with, you know, from the three-finger pour, which we all hear about, to a punt. So all the crazy thing they do with the bottle, they could pour mm. it however possible. Wow. On oh, that's side, cool. You notice yeah. the little arrows, which are loosely millimeter markers. So you know how many shots are left in the glass. So again, mm. it's practical. But on the aesthetic side, every time I cheers, I would always say it to the top. I've never said to money, to women, to anything foolish. I always told my friends, since I started drinking in my 20s, to the top, to the top. And one day their friend says, why do you always say that? I said, I'm going to get to the top at some point. I'm going to drop the ladder for you guys to come up with me. I'll mm-hmm. figure it out. I'll keep working hard. We'll figure this thing out. We'll get there together. But the reason the arrows get smaller as you go up, because I knew for a fact that the larger you get, the smaller your circle gets, and I would lose friends and family along the way. So this means everything to me. Mm-hmm. So when people see the arrows, I knew for a fact that I would deal with different people and I would grow my network while losing people. It's just yep. part of the journey kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And that's the bottle. That's Yave. Won back-to-back gold medals in the San Francisco World Competition, which is pretty Correct. awesome. Yeah. When Yave shows up, we win gold. So that's pretty cool. And as I said, I knew I always wanted to do flavors. My grandmother passed away before I created Yave. Her favorite fruit was mango. Mm. So this is the first natural mango tequila created. That's a, te- that's a tequila, not a liqueur. Something yep. different. And when she, I'm, I like to say my superpowers turn negative into positive. I've been through a lot in my life. You could dwell on it or you could learn from it. So when she died, I said, I want her to live forever. I'll do the world's first mango. So it came mm-hmm. from here, not here. I'm not a genius. While I passed away, I wanted to live. And here we are today. All natural, no sugar, no syrup. We, we naturally macerate the mango and infuse it with our war winning blanco. That's it. You can drink it straight on the rocks, mango mojito, mango margarita, whatever makes mango and seltzer, whatever makes people happy is what I wanted to go to. Mm. So next was Yava Jalapeno. Nice. Reason being... Spicy margaritas are one of the top drinks in the country. It always has been. It's always grown. But I respect the brand called Tanteo. Yep. I sold them when they launched in 2008. I was a part of the Empire team in, in the um, distributor. So I sold it initially. Mm. And I, I, le- I heard this story. They went in a meeting, but they went on-premise driven brand. Yeah. So I went at the meeting. Their <clears throat> founder actually passed away. I became cool with him yeah. you know, over time. And then he passed away. So God rest his soul, of course. But in the meeting, I remember him asking a question and saying, you know, any questions or thoughts, guys? And my, I look at my manager, looks at me like, here we go. Joe's going to say something. And I'm like, look, but I always say things to help people. I'm a positive guy. So I'm like, look, I see three things wrong with me for the off-premise, not the on-premise. For me to sell it, I need a few things. One was they didn't have a base at the time, which they've done now, but they didn't have that. So, of course, Blanco was first. Because right. sometimes people are like, ah, flavors, I don't know. Where'd you make it from? What's it taste like without it, et cetera. So we did that first. Two was they're 80 proof. I'm a 70 proof flavor guy. That's just my thing. That's my personal opinion when it comes to bartenders and the way it mix. And then what they did, the first of their time, they went for the extreme spice, like a nine or 10 in the Richter scale of heat. Right. They went for the flavor of jalapeno, so we took the seeds out. Mm. In Spanish, we say sabor de jalapeno because it smells and tastes like it, but as a bartender, you can spice up, you can't spice down. So right. I want to give them something as a base, just kind of work with. Um, we do everything from spicy margaritas to spicy lemonades to bloody marias which we call Ave Marias, which is also Yave Marias, of course. And then what we reintroduced was Reposado. Yep. And I say reintroduced because, as I said, in the backpack days, it was you know out of, out of a book bag. We launched with the Blanco Repo Añejo, yep. Mango Coconut Jalapeno. Coconut? Yeah. So when you go to distribution, Joe Lahane, who's become a mentor, a family member to me, he used to run Diageo in North America, like their distributor relationships. He came on board, and he came on and said, I need you to stop selling. And I'm like, you're crazy. What do you mean stop selling? That's what I do best. He's like, we have to take a few steps bo- forward, a few steps backward, take a thousand steps forward. I said, I trust you. Why would I bring you in and not listen to you? And of course he was right. So we had the first three that I showed you. Then a little thing called COVID happened and the whole world went on a reposado. Mm. Couldn't get it. 
we, we relaunched ours and it worked. I mean, we sold wow. out immediately. People love the flavor because other brands were sold down shelves. We got their space back bars. We got a lot of room as well. So it worked in our favor. And then what we just, just, just brought back as of last month, and you were excited when you first said it, it's coconut. Nice. So coconut's back, even though it's, you know, <laughs> it's not afraid of people. I like, I like coconut. I like, I like, I mean, there's some really bad coconut spirits on the market. I know. There's a few that I've had before and I'm like, oh, when someone nails coconut, it's really good. I'm going to get you a bottle of this. I'm actually going to see you in New York and in Georgia. So I'll make sure you have some. Awesome. But it's all natural again, same as the other ones. And there's another tequila out, 1800 is a coconut. There's yeah. a little bit on the sweeter side. I went the other way. So that people that like bases, like Blancos and Repos, nines of flavors, this could kind of get them to come over because it's more of a subdued flavor. Because yeah. I, I always tell people, Yava doesn't make sugar bombs. I'm not going to make yeah. something that's going to be all coconut, all mango, all jalapeno. It'll have the hint and the flavor that mix well with other things. But I'm not going to overwhelm you with the actual flavor. Because yeah. we do it all natural, it makes it much, much easier. And yeah. that's Yava in a nutshell. And we're working on something right now, a Cristalino, which mm. is in the works. The liquid's done. Now I'm working on packaging, and then that'll release early next year. Wow. Wow, it's quite a lineup you got, man. Yeah, yeah it's fun. I mean, it's, it's something for everybody. Exactly, exactly. And I, and I think you're right. You know, I mean, obviously, you I mean, you probably hear it. You get a lot of purists that are like, oh, that's not real tequila. But to your point, you know, even with whiskey, like I love bourbon, but I know a lot of people that love that cinnamon whiskey. I know a lot <laughs> of people that are drinking that peanut butter whiskey right now. Yep. Um, and sales are going through the roof. And people are like, how do you do that? I'm like, listen, it's not for me. I don't like really like the peanut butter whiskey. But my neighbor does, and their neighbor does, and there you go. Who, who am I to judge? I, I don't care. Like I, I'm probably a, more of a purist at heart when it comes to like tequila and whiskey. But of course, I love a jalapeno tequila. Like I'm a fan of the Tanteo. I'm ex very excited to to try yours, um, just because it's delicious. And I've seen their process, and they make it with real jalapenos, yep. um, and that that's how I like it. So so cool for you, man, and and good for you for like just doing your own thing. Because I think at this point. This tequila, you know, category is getting so big and so popular um, yeah. that it's going to become normal, like like the other brands, like you said, like the rums and the vodkas and and things like that. And and you know, before it was just like no tequila from this place and from Mexico and da da da. And now agaves are growing in Australia and other places. Yeah. Um, and I think you're just going to see it. It's I don't think it's there's going to be an end to this anytime soon, man. It's it's pretty exciting to be in the tequila business. Yeah, hundred percent. As you were saying, with the you don't drink it, but other people do. I can right. tell you at least. One out of every 10 people say, I don't do flavors. I'll never drink a flavor. And I'm like, we are customers do. But the people right. that walk in do. But that 22-year-old kid who's like, I don't care about the traditional stuff. I want to try something new every time I come in. They'll try it. And now I'm starting to get people to kind of jump on board with it. But initially, when we were like the only flavors, it was really, really crazy. It was all, all pushed back. And it just made me stronger because as a salesman, you always hear no. You just learn how to overcome it. Learn the no's. Know the no's. So next time you walk into another guy, you're like, I was prepared for this. Yeah, and and people do it all the time. They're like, "Well, I could just chop up jalapenos and put it in my tequila." I'm like, "You could, or you could just buy the bottle that already has it in." And everyone's It'll like, "No, the no, same no. every time. It'll taste the I'm same like, exact way every time." We're all lazy. When I was a bartender, I used to buy Tenteo. I'd be like, "Why don't you just make your own?" I'm like, "I, I don't have to. It's just it's done for me. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm right here." Like, <laughs> yeah, and even when I go into a concert, like we carry Tenteo, and I'm like, "Cool." Like they carry a lot of people carry Tenteo and Ghost now, which is another. Spice when it's yeah, come out, they have I've the ghost pepper, and I'm like, cool, they're competing with one another. I'm not, this is the opposite side of that. Like, keep that brand. I'm not saying to replace them, I'm not saying to dump them. Have two options because I always imagine a couple walking into a bar, husband and wife, and the husband says, Let me get a spicy margarita, keep it mild. And the wife is like, Hell no, I want it as spicy as it gets. Yeah, with Yavich, the they can do that, they can make sure he's happy and she's happy. With the other ones, if they want spicy, you go with that. But when it comes to something lighter, you can go with Yavich. So it's always it's an option for everybody, it's enough. Enough people out there where every brand can be successful. Yeah, yeah. So what? Um, I mean, you're more more plans for expansion. What's what's the next steps? What is the next? You got a two? I'm sure you have a two, three, five year plan. But Always. um, can you can you tell me what what's going on or what? I mean, has the team grown? Is it more than just you now? What? Oh what no, it's it? it's way more than me. Like it's okay. nonstop. But when it comes to the actual markets. The markets that we're in right now are New York City, New York State, two different markets because it's disconnected, of course. So yeah. New York City, New York State, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, D.C., Maryland, Rhode Island. I'm not sure I just said that. Yep. D.C., Maryland, Delaware, launched in South Carolina a few months back. We just launched this month in July in Tennessee. I'm going down there for the next couple of weeks. 
August 1st, we launched down in Georgia with Georgia Crown. Amazing cool. people. Have you, yeah. I met them once and we've spoken nonstop. Great relationship. And then in Florida, we're opening up a breakthrough. And those guys are like raring to go. So in September, September 1st. So the rollout is July 1st, just happened, Tennessee. August 1st, Georgia. Wow. Then Florida, September 1st. And I'm loosely working on Puerto Rico, trying to lock that in. And working on a few other deals with other distributors because I'm humbled to say that every major distributor essentially has reached out to us to work in some capacity, as well as some big suppliers. Where we've had conversations with just to talk. I don't yeah. plan on selling right away. I want to build this thing right. But we have some lucrative offers out there for partnerships, which is really, really humbling to say because it started on the damn sofa backpacking. And now people are taking it a lot more serious. And it's always funny because they say the only way we want to work with you is if Joe Cruz comes into the market or you have to pitch us. And I'm like, yeah, let's go. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's more fun than anything. Uh, and, and one of my guys, so let me get to the team. Joe yep. Lane, as I mentioned, is our chairman, brought in an absolute legend. He downplays it every time. He'll say he's light action. He'll put your thumbs down. He's awesome. People love him in the industry. His integrity is unmatched throughout the country. Then you have Ben, who's my managing director. Ben had a logistics company that ships coconut ingredients all over the world. Mm. Somebody fell into it and became good at it. So Ben came on to help with logistics, which helps me dramatically because it's time consuming. You have to learn the entire world laws. Then you have Scott, who's our CFO, who brought Ben in through another guy who I brought in. And Scott runs all the back end finance and legal, the boring stuff. He's like in a basement, mm -hmm. just getting things done. And once in a while he pops up, <laughs> oh shit, that's the Scott guy. That's him. There you go. But you need helps. a guy like that. You need a guy like yep. that. And him and Ben mm -hmm. are the top two guys that do that back end stuff. And then you have Paul, my boy Paul Nickerson, who runs New York City. Then we got it from the beginning. Now we actually have a market he can run. He kills it out there, tastings and events and everything that you need. Then Danny Reyes was one of my closest friends and the, the first investor outside of me and Yave. The first guy to say, I'm going to put my money in. And wow. I'll never forget when he gave me the check. He comes over, he gives me the check. We're talking um, and he leaves. And I'm like Seinfeld in the hood. My door used to always be open. It would, you just walked in, everybody walked <laughs> in. I was just kind of hanging out on the sofa working. And he leaves and he comes back and he says, We own a liquor brand, bro. And he slams the door. And I'm like, yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Then I went back to work. But yeah. you know, has that levity in perspective. And then we have a lot more people from our marketing team and our social media team, like all those guys, like it's it's a lot more people involved. So it's not just a few of us, it's become more and more. But I always stress the people team because there's only so much I can do as one person as you expand. It's only so yep. many places that I can be. And there are a lot of things that I don't like to do. I don't like to do the boring work. I yep. will travel. To, if somebody calling me right now, San Diego Florida in the morning, I'd be there. No problem. I go to Florida, California, Alaska. I don't care. If you told me you need me to sit an hour, uh, for four hours in an office, then we might have a problem. My ADD <laughs> kicks in. I'm like, dude, like, how much are you going to pay me? I, I pay me more for that than the travel. <laughs> so I have guys that can do that and do what I do, which is great. Uh, you, you remind, you remind me of me, man. I am, I am the same way of like, I'll fly to California right now. I'll do some events. I'll do some tasting, but if I got to sit in some speech somewhere, shoot me. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. No, thank you. Even when I get a hotel, people always say, you get the most basic hotels. I don't stay in it much. Yeah. Second I land, I don't check in. I meet the salesperson. I go to the offices. I hang out. I go see accounts. I get in that night. I check in. Then I'm gone in the morning. I don't, yeah. need, I don't need a, a fancy hotel. It'd be, just be a waste of money. Yeah. Like, I'm the simplest guy. I'm definitely the simplest founder. The lowest yeah. maintenance founder in the country. I just want to sell, sell, sell. Everything else is BS. Yeah. So do you... Do you do you enjoy any of the the key moments, like when someone handed you that check or when you got that distribution? I mean, do you take a day to celebrate? Do you take an hour or a minute and say, awesome team, and then go back to work? Or, I mean, do you take the moments to enjoy? Yeah, I've actually gotten much better at it because um, one of my closest friends, Jason, a.k.a. Brett, was the one who died in the bottle with me. Hmm. Unfortunately, he passed away last August 7th, 9.38 p.m. Uh, so he was that. my energy guy, and I was the – blinders on work 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 and he was the one who would appreciate things oh man bro you gotta love this look at this and i was like yeah you're right we would have a drink so when he passed i had to become both of those people I had mm -hmm. to understand the joy and as i said perspective early on we were talking before this i've gained more perspective from COVID and him passing away than i have in my entire life wow and it just made me this guy that every little thing i celebrate you have to because you don't know how they're yeah. going to be here so i do it yeah. for him now it's to the top it's to bread it's here we go so i've gotten much much better over the past couple of years even now we've added an investment group that's Help us dramatically. People who are believing in the dream and don't just give us money. They put their energy and whether you put your time, your money, your resources, you like something on Instagram. I fight for those people. Like mm -hmm. it gives me energy. It's like the 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 energy, the battery in your back, as people right. say. Yeah, I get a lot more of that nowadays than ever. And again, since he passed away, it was just 
enjoy the moments, man, embrace it. And now when we launch markets, even when I go in, I come with a, I've always been positive, but now it's like through the roof positivity. Cause it's like, I made the flight. I'm here. We're going to sell some yoga. And as I yeah. told you, when we first got on, I woke up this morning, my family's healthy. I'm building my dream. Those are the three things I have every single day that I wake up. And yeah. That, I appreciate that's, it. that's beautiful, man. And then, you know, I, I, you mentioned you're, I mean, you're traveling so much, you're running a business, you're a dad. I mean, I think you mentioned you work out still. I mean, what is, what's your regimen like? Is it just 10 hours of work? Do you do, do you get a workout in? Are you trying to eat healthy? I mean, I've, oh, I've, yeah. I was eating rice cakes before we got out here. I started shifting even that. Like, I'm not going to eat these bland styrofoam things with peanut butter. <laughs> but, <laughs> but to be honest, when COVID was happening, I was actually doing charity. People don't know this. I was feeding 5,000 people a day in Spanish Harlem. Oh, I made geez. a good friend, James Gonzalez, partnered with World Central Kitchen to feed people. So I worked every day, six days a week from 7.30 to 3.30. Every single morning I would wake up, I would get the food ready. I'd get the orders ready. The cops, the local cops would help us. We had a lot of different foundations that would help us. And it was exhausting. And during COVID, I started eating much better. Mentally, mm. I was like, I have to eat better. What am I doing? Like, I'm so tired because I'm not taking care of myself. Right. And I got back into, not really a routine, so to speak. But like today, for example, I woke up very early, had a bunch of calls. I saw a couple of accounts. I came home and I had a half hour window. And I ran downstairs. I have a gym where I live now. They built one recently. I worked out hard for half an hour, everything I had. Came back up, got on a call, did push-ups during the call. I was on mute while people were talking. Swear to God, I do 100 push-ups a day, minimum. Absolute minimum. I can't get away with it. Did push-ups, talk. I can breathe through do you, it. Do you, have a, do you have a girlfriend? Do you have, a, do you have someone that, that looks at you when you do these things? Well, nobody like, looks at me because I'm all over the place. But, yeah, I, it's funny because I recently got back together with a girlfriend that I dated 20 years ago when we were young. Wow. You broke up because of me. I take all the blame. I was young and dumb and I wanted to, you know, be all over the world. And then when we started Yave, I told my team, I'll never forget this moment. We were sitting, we had one of our meetings. I said, I think I want to get a girlfriend. I want to lock in. I don't want to be distracted by women and, you know, all the things that happened in the liquor business. Yeah, right. Three months later, I actually saw her on a friend's Instagram because he went to her yoga class. Wow. I'm like, oh my God, is that jazz? And I reached out very innocently and we spoke and spoke and spoke and then a few months later, she was like, we're together now. And I was like, okay, yeah, you're, you're right. <laughs> That's it. And I got to block in again because, right. again, I don't, I've don't. i never done drugs. I'm not a big drinker. I don't have many distractions except meeting people. Yeah. I, agree. I just like to meet people and meet new experiences, have new friends. And that was one I didn't want to focus on as much until Yava started building. Mm, so right. she allowed me to lock in and she fully understands that I'm trying to build something to change our lives. And yeah. You always hear the phrase, a good woman behind every good man, all that stuff. She epitomizes it because she doesn't stress me out. If, if yeah. we don't like something, we talk about it for a few minutes. We give our reasons why. And we're like, we should have this conversation again. And that's it. We, the second we had done, nothing, and then I'm back on the road. And it's like, do, you, do, you, do you think it's that way because you're a little bit older now, maybe a little more mature? Like, would you have been that way in your late 20s? Or? Nope. Yeah. So I yeah. broke up. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> that's why. I'm not going to pretend like I was the most mature guy. But right. now it was, I, I was open enough to share my vision. Here's why right. I think I can fail. Here's what can go wrong. You could be part of it because we're together now. If you were to bring me down, I've seen enough people go through that. And yeah. she was like, I won't. Just treat me with respect. Basic things. Yeah. And we respect each other through and through. No problems. It's, I, the way I look at life is whether it comes to friendships, partnerships, relationships, anything, it should be easy. Yeah. Well, us talking right now is easy. We're just talking, we're conversing, having a good time. That's life to me. That's exactly yeah. how life is. It should be easy. Relationships should be easy. And I, well, I mentioned it because my, my wife, she's also my business partner and uh, we work from home a lot. And I've got like sort of a makeshift gym downstairs, but I'm the same way as you. I'll be like on a call, like doing curls and she just comes down and like <laughs> rolls her eyes. Like that's my husband. And there she's goes. Like, uh, we, she'll ask me a question and I'll be like, Oh yeah, sure. And like, you know, and then I'll put the weights down and I'll do my part of the, the conference call, but I'm the same way, but it's nice to have a lady by your side who understands I wouldn't say the crazy of us, but just kind of like, this is, I'm doing two things at once. I'm going to listen to a podcast. I'm going to work out or I'm going to do a meeting and go for a run. Um, and then, you know, my wife's just like, that's, oh, that's just my husband and he's doing what he's doing. Yeah. And I'm very organized, but I'm very free spirited. Like I'm the type of, when I go to a meeting, I don't expect anything, no expectation or limitations. So when mm -hmm. I walk in, I'm the same person with everybody. It, it makes it much easier. So even in the home, the way she knows I'm on a call, it's because I wear certain headphones. I wear certain headphones for business stuff and other headphones for other things. So wow. she can look at me wherever I am in the house because I'll be working out anywhere in the house. And she's like, okay, he's got the, he's got the big <laughs> headphones on. 
He's good. The white headphones, no, I can't talk to him. Anytime I have those headphones on, she just leaves me alone. She knows I'm doing business. So I'm I'm quiet because they're on the other side. I have to mute yeah. it. So a lot of little things we do within the home, but it's communication. Same as with Yavid. The, the main things that we preach, and this is all of us, it's not just me. It's intent, integrity, yeah. trust, and transparency, character, and communication. Wow. You have those six things, I think you're pretty good. And we, we do it very well at Yavid in my home. I try to do that with new people I meet. When people ask me about starting a business, I give them the same, you know, the same um, theories that I have. I try to give them everything, everything. Here's what I believe. You can mm. use it or not, but I'm going to give you everything that I have. You've got, you've got great theories, man. Are these things that you've picked up through school, reading your own books, podcasts? Like, have you, how have you put all these theories together? Really life. Okay. Just life in general. And, and you see so many different quotes all the time. I don't yeah. agree with all of them. Like, there are times you see a positive quote and a lot of people go, oh my God, it's amazing. And I'm like, that's stupid as hell. Like that, that doesn't relate to everybody. That relates to one group of people. Like it's not, I just, what I, when I speak about the theories and everything I have, it's me trying to put everything I've had into life. And I'm yeah. very blessed that I have different people around me in terms of ethnic backgrounds, races, mm. ages, mm. sexes, sexual orientations. I'm lucky enough that I can reach out to anybody and they can give me more perspective on something because yeah. I don't know everything. I don't pretend to know everything, but the people around me collectively, we know damn near everything. Yeah. Isn't it, isn't it great to just diversify the people around you? Like when I, I'm from upstate New York and I mean, there was just basically one type of person up there. When I moved to New York city, I was like, Oh wow. Like, Holy cow, different people, different perspectives, different ideas. And I was like, this is, this is what I love. And it's helped me when I lived in New York city for 20 years, um, you know, just diversifying the people around you because it gives you different thoughts and gives you different ideas. And I talk to young bartenders sometimes and I'm always like, get out of your group or get out of the bar industry and talk to other entrepreneurs and other different industries and other people. And you're going to learn so much more than just staying with your same three, four friends. hundred percent agree. Like I'm Puerto Rican by nature. I'm part of so many Puerto Rican organizations that of course I take pride in it, but I pride myself more on being able to get along with everybody. I I don't care about the color of your skin, sexual orientation. I don't care about this. I I genuinely don't. If I meet someone and they're a good person, I want to hang out with them more. If they're not, I don't care if you're somebody from where I grew up or somewhere from far. I just won't. I don't like negative energy because I said it recently. I want to do a book on all the things we learned as kids. And there's one saying that always sticks with me, and it's why I carry myself the way I do. And it's, it takes more muscles to frown than smile. Same thing with negative energy. When you're upset, you're walking around, and you're like, oh, and you're like frustrated, and it takes everything out of you. You're doing that yeah. to yourself. Yeah. Same with frowning. And as a kid, we as a kid, we learn so many things that we don't apply later on. And that's one of the ones I try to admit. I try to personify like i'm gonna be positive all the time i don't care what happens because it could always be worse i've been through horrible things throughout life but i want people to be around me and say you know what i want to be around him more or people to see i call them and say oh joe cruz he might lift me up because i don't know what's going on around me i just know what's going on within me yeah yeah i don't know what's going on around me i just know what's going on in me that's yeah i like i think a lot of people these days need to need to apply that to their lives they're worried about everything around them they cannot control and if they just worry about themselves they can help themselves and the people close to them and um and and that'll expand so that that's beautiful man so um great journey man this is this is really cool where you're at and, and and what you're doing um you know what what's the overall consumer feedback on on the products is it is it been the flavors is it, when you do consumer tastings is everyone do you get a lot of that like i'm a purist kind of thing or people just like this is so cool um, or do you yeah. get a little bit of both kind of thing yeah and the re the reason for the bases and the flavors the bases and sub orders which is flavors in spanish was yeah, something for everybody yeah it could be something for everybody it was yeah. pretty simple and more often than not uh, even when, i haven't done as many tastings lately i try my best but when i would do tastings it would always be the same i'll try the blanco oh this is smooth i like it all right, let me try the repo. I don't know much about it. It's aged in a barrel, et cetera, et cetera. Then we get to the flavors. The average person goes, I don't do flavors. And I wake up inside. I'm like, yes. And I just go, cool. I don't want you to taste it. Just smell it. Just <clears throat> smell one. And they're like, oh, let me let me smell the mango. They smell it. Oh, let me taste a little bit. They taste a little bit. And then they go, how much is this? And I'm like, see? <laughs> see? You went from not drinking it to loving it. And then the different flavors, same thing. Because, again, most people assume, most people walk in, they know everything. They walk in with negative connotations. Oh, yeah. flavors are horrible. You haven't tried Yavid flavors. I don't know yeah. anything about what you tried before. This is different. Give us a shot, literally and figuratively, of course. And more often than not, people are perceptive to it. And again, for the purest purists, right now, like Steve Stewart, Stephen Lee, two of our investors become friends over time. They're coconut fanatics. Yeah. 
fanatics. They love the Blanco. They love yeah. the Rosa, They drink straight. But every time their friends are around us, they're like, try this coconut. I know you don't yeah. do flavors. We didn't do flavors either. And that's the one that's translated. And for someone with a sweeter taste, try this mango. Mm. Somebody who likes spicy and likes something a little peppery, jalapeno. So that's why the 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 lineup is the way that it is. It's something cool. for everyone, quite literally. And for most people who don't drink tequila, Yava is a tequila for you because I didn't drink tequila before I created Yava. Yeah, I was not a Yava drink. I'm not was not a tequila drinker. I woke up, said I'm gonna do my own. I wanted to taste good because, ironically, people drink a lot of liquors that don't taste good. I grew up in a world where they drink a lot of brown liquor. You know what that means? Mm -hmm. I'm like, do you like that? They're like, no, I just like the way I feel after. And I'm like, that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. So why don't you eat healthy food? Why, <laughs> oh, no, I hate broccoli. Why don't you eat more of that? The heavies does good for you. And then because of a funny argument, they're like, dude, this makes no, yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah, so, sometimes you have to handhold people and educate them a little bit and to show them there's a better way of doing things. They can enjoy it and feel good afterwards as well. 100%. <laughs> like so, I said, literally, I was eating rice cakes and rice cookies and stuff and peanut butter and doing things because I've taught myself to say no a couple times a day. If I want something sweet, I'm like, you know, I'll do something better. And as you know, it takes time. You can't just wake up one day and be healthy. It took time yeah. and time to to try different things and see what I liked. But I'm a huge veggie guy. I'm yeah. Huge fruits and veggies. I'm really, really big. I can eat it all day if made correctly, and I'll be good. All right. Well, I mean that that's that's a good habit to be into for the yeah. fruits and veggies. Yeah. What um? So how your son's 19 now? Yeah. So is he working with dad for dad, or is you? Well, well nobody works for me. When it comes to Yava, nobody works. They work with me because I had a dream and you're helping me create it and make it even bigger. Love that. I've always had that mindset. I don't, I'm not a boss. I'm a leader. I'm going to work with you to get things done. I'm not going to tell you, go do this and that. No, let's, let's figure out how we can get this done together or how you can do it to help the team. Simple as that. But my son actually went to Ithaca for a film. That was oh. a big thing for him. Yeah. That he, when creating Yava, he, I remember he asked me one day on the sofa, we're eating and he's like, dad, why did you do it? And I was, I fed my passion. My heart told me to do it. I knew I wanted to do it. I got excited and I went for it. What's your passion? And he said, video games and film. I was hmm. like, choose one, go all in. And if it doesn't work, go all in for the other one. And like three weeks later, he comes home and he's like, dad, film. I'm going to hmm. go to college. I'm going to get a full scholarship. I was like, sounds good. And that was the extent wow. of the conversation. I kid you not. Wow. So, you know, six months later, he's in his junior year. He applies to the college and did everything himself. I didn't help him with anything. I only signed papers when he asked me to, but he put his... You know, he put his blinders on and went yeah. for it. And one day he comes in. And my son's beyond respectful. He doesn't curse. He's not like a, a bad kid. He's another reason I'm so successful because he made my life easy before I had a girl, before mm. anything else. In the, in the home, he made my life extremely easy. So my son, JC3, I'm JC Jr., of course, all the props in the world. So one day he comes home. I'm sitting on the sofa. And a lot of these stories lead to the sofa because I was sitting there working. Dude, I, I got to see this sofa, man. Jesus. Oh, man. This is <laughs> I, I took a picture of it because I read it recently because it was literally falling apart. And I was like, all right, it's time. It was a huge sectional. You got huge rid of the sofa? Had to. It, it literally was falling apart. Literally. I had it for like, wow, like 15 years. You got to throw that in. You got to put that in a storage unit or something, man. That's I tried. Cold. But it was, it was a huge You have a section. picture of it at least? Yeah, I got everything. All right, all right. Okay, good, good. But my son comes home. And he throws a paper on my lap and walks away. And I'm like, what the? Wait a minute. I was like, my son doesn't do that. So I look at it and it was a scholarship. To school. Wow. Full, full academic scholarship. I just had to pay room and board. And my sofa set up in a way that to the left is the hallway. So he had his, he was looking at me like this. I kid you not. Just looking out the corner of the hallway. <laughs> and I could see him out the peripheral. And I said, you did it. He said, I told you that. Same way you say you're going to do it, you did it. I did this. Wow. So now he works with us filming certain content. Um, recently, I became part of the, uh, the, on the board of Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So I help with the festival, the Puerto Rican parade, all those kind of things. And he's filming for that now, as wow. well as other things for Yave. So it's pretty cool that he can apply that. Wow, dude, yeah. that's that's super cool. He's got his dad genes, man. He's he went all in and and Thank took God. care of the paperwork, and yeah. that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, you got a big old, you're, you you got speechless with a big smile on your face for a minute there, man. You're yeah. super proud of your son. <laughs> I mean, because you think about it, there's so much. There's only so much you can say. Yeah, kids follow. They look at you. They if I were to tell my son never be late, and I haven't been late since. July 30th, 2001. I kid you not. It was the last time I was late walking into a meeting. I never forgot. I was one minute late. Never forgot I felt. And my son knows these stories. So if I were to tell my son, you can never be late. And then we get to the movies, even the movies. If I get there 20 minutes late, he's like, why does that always say this? But he doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. And throughout his life, he saw me do that. And I don't lie to people. I don't BS. If something isn't right, I'll tell you. If I can't work with you, I'll be honest with you. Relationships, partnerships, everything. I try to be, I try to carry my character as high as possible. And he sees it. 
Whether I tell him or not, he hears me on the phone. He'll see video calls. So the fact that it translated to him and he he mm. he he personifies that as well and he exudes that. I mean, that's that's the ultimate feeling as a parent. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's glad that you recognize that because some people mm -hmm. just tell their kids, tell their kids, tell their kids, tell their kids, and then they do the total opposite, and then they wonder why their kids are not listening to them or they didn't turn out a certain way. It's like you're they're still watching you. Like kids, kids are watching and they're visual almost more than auditory. <laughs> Yeah, imagine me eat, telling him to eat vegetables. I mean, fried chicken, yeah, and gravy, and all those things. And he's like, "Dad, what is happening?" It's like, "No, you do it because it's good for you." No, I like to again lead by example in every way in my life. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome, man. Um, well, cool. Listen, th thank thank you for your time here. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate you being part of Arte Agave. Um, where can uh, can you plug like you know the website or Instagram or where can people buy uh, all that good information? Yeah, everything across the board is at Yava Tequila. Okay. Capital Y A, capital V E, tequila. On the website, we have a store locator. So the markets you're in, if you were to put your zip code or hit the little bullseye, it'll show you all the stores around you. As well as now, we ship to around 33 states. So if somebody loves a store and says, I want to try this Yavis stuff, we can ship to you for the most part. I think it's on the website, shows you every single state, but that's there. On Instagram, social media, of course, it's Yavis tequila. We have amazing ladies running that, Whitney and Amanda doing their thing. I give them all the credit in the world. Shout because, out to Whitney and Amanda. Yeah, because I can't do that <laughs> stuff. I, I don't even go on my own Instagram as much. I'm moving around too much. But you can find everything online. We have a lot of, I've done a lot of interviews, which is sounds pretty douchey, but it's cool to say at the same time. People can Google my name and Google Yave and Google everything. You'll find us rather easily. So that's yep. really cool. And again, it's, it started from absolutely nothing. So what I tell every single person is everybody out there has a dream. Everybody thinks about leaving their job. Some people think about creating a brand from scratch. Most people don't do a damn thing about it. They don't even research it. They don't even Google it. They don't even start the process. I tell people just go all in because you don't know how long you're going to be here. Wow. Every single, you have, we have a finite amount of time on this planet. Not one person can tell you how long they're going to be here. So you have to treat every day like it should last and enjoy the moments and try to leave an impression. Try to just, you know, it's not about the money you make. It's what you do with the money to help other people. That's how I feel. Very cool, brother. This was an absolute pleasure chatting with you. And I, I have a feeling this is going to be one of many conversations between us. And again, thanks for supporting Arte Agave. And uh, we look forward to having you, man. Thank you for your time. Yeah. I'll see you in New York and in Atlanta. We're in both of them. Love that, man. I love that. <laughs> All right. Take thank care, you, everybody. Man.